So I'm sure many of you have already seen this, but the new Mega Lights feature for Unreal Engine 5.5 has been demonstrated recently. We don't often talk about Unreal Engine on this channel. I've done a couple of videos here and there, but because it's to do with lighting, and I'm very passionate about lighting, I figured I might just show you a bit of it because it's quite impressive. But I like when companies take risky but ambitious moves when it comes to features, because the stagnation of graphical technology, particularly game engines, is getting a little bit annoying. And though I find Unreal annoying to work with in many ways, largely because it's such a heavyweight piece of software, it is really nice to see some of these features coming along and I do wish that other engines would get a bit more ambitious so let's just take a look so the point of mega lights is to have a performant way of letting the artists use as many lights as they would like that are all shadow casting without compromise as such a bit like their virtualized geometry system which was nanite and then the lumen global illumination system mega lights is an attempt to tackle the light limit of course there are some limitations so I believe this doesn't work with directional light sources which kind of makes sense why would you have a thousand directional light sources that's kind of what you would usually use for like the sunlight but as well as regular lamp objects as we'll see with this character demo moving down the corridor you can have complex area lights so this is something that's really nice and i love playing with this kind of thing in cycles which is a path trace engine but you can see how it in real time interacts with the environment now real time is a key point here it's always the most exciting thing i just hold on let me go back a couple of seconds so i like looking at this brick wall up here and then seeing the uh there we go, that bright light against the uh, the ancient looking brick. So it looks fantastic, but obviously with systems like this, there are some trade-offs. Nothing is ever free as such. Although to be honest, I think there are ways they could get around it quite easily. But with systems like this, when you turn light objects on and off, sometimes there's a delay in the way of when a light disappears, you see like the kind of like ray traced remnant still affecting the environment before that kind of fades off and disappears. But it's just a side effect of these more complex methods. But there is something else interesting to say about all of this, because when I look at features like this, it reminds me that path traced engines and ray tracing is technically easier to do than rasterization. In the way of the principle is much simpler. You're just firing rays and getting information back. Rasterization, so traditional game engines representing polygons, rasterizing that to pixels on the screen. Rasterization engines are just all workarounds. Like that's all it is it's just hacks hack upon hack upon hack trying to represent something that might mimic reality ray tracing slash path tracing and i am using the terms interchangeably because that's how language changes over time nvidia uses ray tracing for everything so now the popular conscious believes that path tracing is ray tracing i know they get some people's nerves but that's how it is when you're doing something closer to reality like that firing rays it's closer to the laws of physics which means it's more elegant which means it requires a shorter expression so you can write a ray traced engine in just one or two lines of code technically because it's typically just a formula well that's the core of it and then you've got everything else that needs to wrap around that also in the past things were far more limited because you'd have to render everything in a linear way so to make a frame you'd have all the different passes making up all the shader information and composing the geometry for whatever cameras were being used and then once all that information was accumulated then that gives you the combined frame nowadays with all sorts of parallel computing gpu acceleration you can run processes in parallel and then feed the data in which means you don't have to wait for as much when rendering a single frame and then in combination with that we've got all these new frame filling techniques which is kind of bridging the gap now between rasterization and ray traced techniques so this was taking place at unreal fest and we're going to watch a little bit more of the demo so right now this character is walking through this marketplace and all of the lights are coming on so these are regular like lamp objects as well as environmental sources like the area lights on the kind of holographic objects there but there's no shadows active so now they're activating the shadows coming towards the camera but notice under the chair here you see that delay that little blurry delay there you go that's a symptom of these techniques but i think something like that is very forgivable because the results are wonderful particularly here as well i like this hologram there we go and really, I've always believed that the forefront of game engine technology should really be focused on giving artists more power. So I'm happy to see that Epic are interested in that. Oh, and YouTube compression is just like destroyed what's on the screen now. It's brilliant. One more little bit of this demo that was quite impressive looking up the spire of advertisements as lit drones fly around. So you can actually play with this now if you're interested. It's in the Unreal 5.5 preview. You need to activate mega lights in the preferences, meaning the project preferences, so then you can get experimental. I used to do artwork using game engines back in like 2016. I wasn't really fond of rendering with cycles because I was impatient and Eevee wasn't really a thing. So I would use the Unity game engine to render my artwork. And that's quite good because stylistically I had quite a lot of control over like uh, post-processing effects 
in the component stack. It's actually quite funny looking back at some of that stuff now. So there we go. No textures whatsoever because I couldn't be bothered. But, you know, the game engine was good enough to give you your lighting and your particle effects. And, you know, it was good enough to pass for stylistic things. God, this stuff is like nearly 10 years ago now. So systems like Mega Lights, it's kind of making me more interested to jump back into that. Although I've still got a lot of work to do in cycles with uh, Afterglow, which is like my lighting project. Excuse the shameless plug, but Afterglow is my project for kind of experimenting with emissive light sources, which is kind of what they're demonstrating in the Mega Lights demo with those screen projections affecting the environment. So obviously I'll be very keen on playing with it and trying it out. Although likewise, I need to try the uh, global illumination for EV next. So anyway, let me know what you think of Mega Lights. Have you played with it yet? The Unreal Fest demo is definitely worth watching. And it seems like there's quite a lot in store for Unreal 5 as well. Let's just take a very quick look before we close up at the public roadmap. They got like a lot of animation based stuff. We got Mega Lights there. Path Tracer. Oh, actual Path Tracer. They can act as a reference for atmosphere and volumetric clouds. Spatial temporal denoiser. Offline rendering through movie render queue. Interesting. So Unreal may actually be viable as an actual renderer. It's really interesting to see them like trying to bridge that gap. Path Tracer volumetric. Yep, first person rendering experimental so you don't have to manage the cameras yourself. So yeah, a lot of exciting stuff there. Anyway, if you made it to the end, put a light bulb emoji in the comments and I will catch you soon.